In my training and consulting work, I frequently come across stories about agile projects that went well for quite a while until they failed spectacularly after, you know, a year or two of work. Shall I tell you a secret? They weren't agile. I'm sure that those people thought they were working in an agile way. They had stand-ups and everything. And I'm sure they were trying their best, but they just didn't capture the spirit of agility, which is, of course, that of risk management. And this is what I'm going to be talking to you today, how to make sure that you're actually getting your money's worth out of the agile approach that you can um, manage risks. So we all know that agile is supposed to you know, make you flexible, make you enable you to change direction based on what you discover. So if you're starting and then you go and go and go and go until you hit the proverbial brick wall once more, then why didn't you see it coming from a long way away? And if you, you know, if you do hit a brick wall, it, it, it's not like in agile projects, everything always goes according to plan. The question is, how can you recover from that? Do you have a way around? Do you have a way over? Or are you so deeply committed that now you're stuck in front of that brick wall and, and you know, you've, you've expended all of your momentum, all of your energy. This is the thing that I find really sad. Like, there's so many teams that build agile systems or what they consider to be agile and they try to work in sprints and short iterations. So the once more, the forward direction works quite nicely. And what do they forget? They forget about the feedback direction about discovering, okay, can we, can we see a brick wall in the distance? Is it going to threaten us? What should we do? Should we maybe change course over here already and make sure that we can somehow avoid this big brick wall? And this happens, especially in, in large organizations, it seems to me, just because they have this, they, they have so much organizational knowledge and tradition around waterfall projects about you know straight line projects that even if they then go and build iterations they still make those iterations go in a straight line and they hit that proverbial brick wall and this is why it's so important to really deliver increments of your product as early as you can to the point that you even deliver maybe in the first iteration already something I know it's hard. I know you're still getting your bearings. I know you're still setting up your infrastructure. If you force yourself to say, okay, there must be something we can show through the customer after two weeks. Not just, you know, a build pipeline or something. Yes, yes, of course, you should build a build pipeline. That's very important. But there must be something that you can show to the customer that is not just PowerPoints. This is the, you know, this is the challenge I give to you even in a complex project, set yourself up to deliver after the first iteration. If you've got a functional safety project and there's a bunch of functional safety documentation that you need to deliver, why, do you, why don't you deliver at least the headlines after the first two weeks? Set yourselves up to iterate, to be fast about it, to make it something really harmless and normal to create new iterations of your product. And that will give you the elasticity, the flexibility, the foresight to change direction before it's too late and not have your agile projects blow up after a year. A decent agile product, a project that has locked in some of the value already cannot possibly blow up after a year because it will already have captured at least partial value. And you know, maybe the result will be disappointing, but something must be there. And this is how you can tell whether you're doing a proper Agile project.